For the first step in this example, let's look at defining some parametric geometry control curves. We're going to define a couple of different curves to work with. I'm going to keep this very simple and actually to start by defining the first curve as a line, just using a number slider to give me a length value that I can change and creating some point by coordinates and a line to join those together. Then I'll basically define two other curves using geometry translate. So I'll take that line and basically do a translation, kind of pulling it up in the z direction and out in the y direction to create two other curves that I can then go ahead and use as the control curves for the geometry. Now, after we've created those basic curves, I'm going to add just a little bit of complexity to this by taking curve two and replacing it with a wave function. So we're going to basically take that line, basically put a series of definition points along the line, extract some values for the x, y, z, and do a little bit of remapping and computing to compute some sign values to introduce a wave on that line. Finally, after I create some new values for the z's, in this case, what am I going to change? I'm going to basically basically re-aggregate some points uh, so that I have points representing the wave and finally create a little bit of a wave curve. So in the end, I'll have two lines and a wavy line. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that's all implemented. So here we are back over in Revit and let me start by just, oh, again, cleansing the palette, removing all those items so that they're not cluttering up the workspace as we go. And it's all going to start with this notion of defining a curve. So for this first curve, which is really just a line, I'm going to go from 0, 0, 0 up to, oh, maybe a length of 100. I'll connect those two into a line, and that's our good starting point. Now, to think about these other two, rather than kind of completely redefine the lines, although I could, I'm going to use a little bit of a shortcut here. I'm going to basically do a translate to basically just take that geometry and introduce a translation. In this case, I'm gonna introduce a translation of 40 for the second curve. So just raising that up as a Z translation of 40. That does raise it 40 above the first one. And then for the third one, I'm gonna take that same geometry. I'm gonna raise it up 36 and push it out in the Y direction 30. So that just creates three different curves. So that's enough to get started. That really could just be our control lines for the structure, but we're gonna sort of just mix it up a little bit here because what I wanna do is basically take that second curve, that's one that's just a line, and basically replace it with more of a wave to kind of make it just a little bit more interesting. And here's how we're gonna do that. This is a variation on the wave functions that we've been working with in the past. I'm gonna create a number of different definition points Okay, and what I'm going to do is just create a series, a parametric series, or a series of parameters from zero to one. I'm gonna take that curve and put a lot of points along that curve. Okay, you can see them there. Those are all the points. Now what we're gonna do is basically take those points and decompose them. I'm gonna get the X, Y, and Z values. Then for the x values, what I'm going to do is just sort of rescale them from 0 to 1. So each of them represents just a parameter everywhere from 0 to 1, okay, and 0.5 in the middle, because I'm going to use that to actually go through and compute a sine wave. So I have as inputs a number of waves and a wave amplitude. We've seen that in several examples so far. And I'm going to basically take the original z value from each of these different points and then do a little sign math. We're taking the X parameter and the number of ways by 360 and the wave amplitude to go through and compute basically a new Z value. So you can see the result of all that is we have some new Z values. So as opposed to everything being an even 40, now they kind of go up and down as Z values. So with that in place, I can now re-aggregate the points. Those are gonna be my Z values for this curve. The X values I'll just carry across. The Y values I'll just carry across. Okay, so with those points coming across, let me go through and run that. You can sort of see there's the points. A little hard to sort of see the curve just based on the fact that they're kind of scattered, but if I make a NURBS curve out of it, you actually be able to see there's the sine curve. Super, so now I have these three different 
curves. Uh, two straight curves or two lines and one sine wavy curve we're going to go through and join those together and put some placement points on them.